Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Recently I've been wrong in a few of my videos, but this time you were all wrong. In 2017 the YouTube channel Vsauce made a video about the Brachistochron curve, which is the curve that is the fastest way to get from point A to point B. Inspired by that video and this reddit post, I made my own more detailed Brachistochron test in Rollercoaster Tycoon 2 and a few years later I also made a video about it. The point of the Brachistochron curve is to show that you need a balance of traveling the shortest distance and picking up speed the quickest. Here the red coaster has a direct and thus the shortest route. But because it's not very steep, it also accelerates quite slowly. The blue track forgets that Pythagoras exists and first goes straight down before leveling out. This is obviously a longer route, but because it picks up speed much quicker, its average speed is high enough that it beats the red track. The Brachistochron curve combines the best of both worlds and first goes steep to pick up speed quickly and then slowly levels out to also keep the travel distance quite short. You can't build the exact Brachistochron in Rollercoaster Tycoon, but this yellow track is a decent approximation and it is indeed the fastest of the three. That video I made about this four years ago did surprisingly well with over half a million views, but what I didn't expect is that it would also haunt me for the rest of my days. To this day I still get comments from people saying that I'm mistaken about a particular bug because according to them that's not a bug, it's actually just how the Brachistochron works. Everyone that says that is wrong. Let me explain why. The bug in question goes as follows. When you have two tracks going down, one steep and one vertical, the steep one has a higher top speed. This is how it works in the game, but that is a bug and not how physics work in real life. Every time I mention this bug in a video I will get at least one comment about how that isn't a bug because that's just the Brachistochron curve in action. It isn't, as I'm not looking at the travel time from A to B here, but rather just at the top speed of the train. When an object is up in the air, it has a certain potential energy, and when it accelerates down via gravity, that potential energy is transformed into kinetic energy. If friction didn't exist, then it would not matter how you went down, as every time all potential energy would turn into kinetic energy, resulting in the same top speed every time. But unfortunately we live in a world and a game where we do lose some energy through friction. There is rolling resistance from the track and air resistance from the air here. On a horizontal track gravity pulls the weight of the train down onto the track giving a lot of rolling resistance. As the track goes down steeper and steeper this effect becomes weaker and weaker until the influence of gravity on the rolling resistance is entirely gone when the track is vertical, it's now pulling in the same direction as the train. Therefore when you go steeper you lose less energy through rolling resistance every second at a certain velocity. And because you also have a shorter travel distance to the ground when you go vertical the energy you lose through rolling resistance is even less. Air resistance doesn't depend on how steep you're going and is merely influenced by how fast you're going. Assuming no friction, both the steep and the vertical drop go through the same range of speeds at a constant acceleration. But since the steep track takes a longer time doing so, it experiences more total air resistance. We have now shown that the steep track experiences more friction and can thus transform less of that potential energy into kinetic energy, which results in a lower top speed. So, to everyone saying that the steep track goes faster because it accelerates for longer, you're wrong. That is already exactly cancelled out if you ignore friction because it accelerates slower, but it also experiences more friction leading to a lower top speed, not a higher one. The reason that we see this bug in the game is that the way that the game physics are coded leads to trains accelerating more than they should on steep track pieces. When calculating the length of a steep track piece it uses an approximation that leads to a longer length than it should get. 
This means that if you ask the game's physics engine, the steep drop is actually about 10% taller than the vertical one and then it's logical that it also reaches a higher top speed. Another way to show that this is wrong is by abusing this glitch to gain height without any power source that puts extra energy into the train. If you build a roller coaster that goes down with a steep track and up with a vertical track, you slowly gain more and more energy and thus height. It's not fast, but if you build enough of those hills, it will add up and this track gains a total of 13.5 meters in height without a launch or a lift hill. This is obviously not how physics work, showing once again that this is a bug. This is actually the exact same bug as the one with the perpetual motion machine consisting of a corkscrew and a half loop. Here it's the corkscrew doing all the work as you gain more speed than you shoot by going down a half corkscrew. This also works the other way by the way, you lose more speed than you shoot by going up a steep track or a half corkscrew. So if you have a full corkscrew or some steep hills you won't notice anything out of the ordinary as the two bugs cancel each other out. I hope you now all realize that I am not mistaken when I say that it's a bug that steep drops gain more speed than a vertical drop. Yes, the Brachistochrone curve does exist, but that's not about the top speed, instead it's about the shortest time to go from point A to point B. So please stop commenting that my physics are wrong, as they are not. Unless I really do make a mistake, then please point it out. Click here to see my original Brachistochrone video, which is an oldie, but a goodie. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.